Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the COA US 2021 conference of Locker Holds Done Dirt Cheap. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and thank you, for McKinney, for hosting us. Um, sorry, not everyone can be here. We miss you guys. Um, but thank you for joining us online. Uh, today, I'm going to be telling about our locker hold installation, our process, kind of what we did, why we did it, um, some things we did wrong, some things we overthought. And I'm just gonna share with you all that process that we kind of went through and along with what we did in Koha to kind of help us some tricks that I learned and then just used to work with the lockers. Um, I didn't necessarily look up how to do this from anybody or talk to anybody. So there's probably a lot of things that you can build on, build off of and do better and improve. My name is Michael Spangamolo. I work for the North Richland Hills Public Library. I'm um, sorry, the North Richland Hills Library. We don't use public in our actual name. Uh, Cecilia was the one that talked to you yesterday. Uh, she was the keynote speaker and she pointed to me as the person that's the big co-op person. Uh, my title is Library Technology Specialist. And so what that really means is when I'm not at the circulation desk or shelving, I am working with Koha on my off hours. Um, my formal training is a Bachelor of Arts and Literary Studies. So I really have just read books. Uh, that's pretty much all my formal training has been. Um, touching on what Ed talked about yesterday, I am the person at the library that likes to play with things. So um, even when I was just at the circulation desk on our old system, I would just read the manual, try to figure out what we can do and some cool tricks. And so it is that I am that person at North Richland Hills. So it's always good to have someone that wants to play with things. Um, I have broken things. And so it is good to have Bywater behind us that I can call up and say, hey, the OPEC looks weird. I'm not sure what I did. Can you please fix it? Or I accidentally deleted the patrons for this year instead of three years ago. Can you help me undo that? So there's been some problems along the way. Uh, so my Koha training, uh, I want to give props to the people that have trained me for that, which of course is just Koha US and Bywater. If you don't know about the Koha US trainings, uh, go to their website and just poke around. They have some awesome trainings on there dealing with like very basic SQL and jQuery all things you need to just play around with Koha. Uh, that's George and Christopher for every other Thursday videos. They're pretty amazing. Uh, even if you don't understand what's going on in all of them, you can kind of just watch and see experts poke around. Uh, and then of course, um, Bioware Solutions does Monday Minutes with uh, Jesse and Kelly, which they're presenting across the way but props on them and the rest of the Bywater team, Lucas, Nick, for helping me because I have definitely, you will see borrowed code from them. And a lot of times I don't understand what I'm doing with the code, but enough to just play with it. So let me give you some facts about North Richland Hills. Uh, we are about an hour, well, depending on traffic, maybe an hour and 30 north um, west or southeast west of here. Uh, we're kind of stuck between Fort Worth and Dallas. Um, in that big suburban sprawl that is between North, uh, between Fort Worth and Dallas. We have a population of around 70,000, but we serve the surrounding areas. We don't have a residency requirement. So we have a lot of patrons from the neighboring areas and we don't have limits on items either. So we have some patrons from further away that come to our library, load up and um, bring them back. Uh, we have about 25,000 active patrons. Is that all that really means is when we make a library card, we set it to expire three years in advance. So we have 25,000 patrons whose cards expire three years in advance, uh, three years from today. So um, not everyone's using the library at once, but that's kind of our um, whole thing there. Uh, our collection size is about 150,000. Uh, we concentrate a lot on our collection. Most of our money goes to collection and employees. Um, when our new library was built, there was a decision from the director to concentrate on employees and people um, instead of putting in new technologies like a sorter or automatic check-in, he hired new part-time people. Um, at this point, I kind of wish we had that sorter, but it's okay. Uh, summers are a little hectic. Um, but good news, we did get a sorter. Um, it's just kind of um, 
crammed in there works differently than the normal quarter. Uh, we average about 15, 50,000 circulations a month. Um, so like I said, we just got our sorter. Uh, we don't have, North Richland Hills only has one library. We don't have any branches. Um, we don't have a drive through window. Uh, we don't have a bookmobile and we just got our sorter on a grant. Um, so what all that means is we're not really the cutting edge on technology. And in fact, the sorter, um, it was fun talking to people and um, vendors about it because we did not, our building was not meant to have a sorter. It was meant to have people working there. And so none of our drops are near our, are near our workroom. It mostly involves staff going to the drops, pulling them and bring them to the workroom. And so now we just have a sorter that's sitting in our workroom that we can use to sort materials and check them in. But we, the automation's not there, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of our money, a lot of our projects like that are used on grants. And, um, and this all comes up when I'm kind of talking about lockers and you'll see um, why we went the way we did. So what are hold lockers? Um, I kind of wanted to dial it back because some people might not quite know um, what I'm talking about. Uh, at least a lot of the part-time staff at our library had no idea that any of this was out there. So I'm pointing to an American Libraries Magazine article that not only talks about hold lockers, but 24 hour access for libraries and kind of broad picture what libraries can do um, to provide access to their patrons even when they're closed. Um, this was always something we talked about during like long-term goals for a library. This would always come up with outreach and how do we reach patrons that are not necessarily coming to our library um, or how do we reach patrons or just make access easier for patrons. Um, so in this article, they do talk about 24 hour libraries. Uh, I'm, I mentioned DTEC self-service library vending machine. These prices can be enormous. Um, Envisionware's 24 hour libraries, I think started, they said around a hundred thousand. Um, but these are like full, huge vending machines. Uh, patrons can browse materials, they can put holds on items. They have Wi-Fi there. Um, just think of a library vending machine on steroids, it's huge. Uh, and so it's worth a, like that hundred thousand, but nothing we could afford. Um, and then hold lockers uh, kind of brings that idea a little back. They are lockers um, and I gave kind of two examples of what they kind of look like. Uh, they are just lockers with this kiosk. You would go up to it. You would enter your um, library card number or scan your library card number and holds that you already have would be stored in these lockers. And when you scan your card, the items would be checked out to you. The locker that, that has your items in it would pop open and you would retrieve your items and go about your way. Um, why these are great is patrons don't have to come into the library. They can be outside of open hours. And as one of the ideas we had is we want to put these library locker holds um, away from the library to try to give us a more of a footprint on where we can serve. So the, this comes to the reasons why we wanted to hold lockers um, distance. Um, this is kind of a map of North Richmond Hills. Our old library is, I don't know if it's really hard to see, it's that tiny dot on the other side of the map, kind of south of 820. So that is about 15, right on traffic, or 20 minutes away. And when we moved about 10 years ago, we felt like we lost a lot of our patron base um, that went to that library. And now that we're all the way on the other side of the city, um, the city border is kind of that corner and then the other corner, um, we felt like, and there's data to back this up, that we lost a lot of the people on that south side of 820 just stopped coming to the library. Um, the other reason we were really looking at lockers is just our hours. Um, we closed for COVID in March 2020, and when we opened a few months later in May, we cut our hours, um, mostly for um, COVID protection reasons. So we always had a full-time person there to take temperatures so we can clean and do deep cleanings. But really, uh, if you look, our old hours used to be Monday through Thursday, nine to nine, Friday, nine to six, and Saturday, nine to five. And whenever someone said, 
I can't get to the library when you're open. We're like, no, you, you can. We're always open. Um, even if whatever time you're working, we, we, you can probably find a time when we're open, we're open late. We kind of um, are open on Saturdays, we're never open on Sundays, unfortunately. Um, but then we cut our hours and we open late and we close a lot earlier, those two hours. And so it's really hard to see if someone's working nine to five and they have kids, how they're able to get to the library in time to pick up their holds. And as I mentioned, COVID is the reason we cut our hours, but it's also a reason we were looking at locker holds. Um, we just started curbside because of COVID. And curbside was one of these ideas that our assistant director was tossing around. Um, she had gone to a conference and I remember it was a meeting, I think in February that we had that she said, oh yeah, I had this conference. It was about curbside. It sounds like a thing we could do. And we were like, yeah, that kind of sounds like something we might want to do. Let's put that in the back burner, kind of let that simmer, and we'll think about it. And then when March rolled around, we're like, oh, wait, no, we need curbside. We need it now. And so we had like a meeting, and then like two hours later, we had our curbside plan. And so lockers were kind of like that. We had the idea that we needed lockers at some point, and it was sitting there simmering. And then COVID hit, and we were like, oh, we need a way to get these lockers out there because we always felt bad about cutting those hours. So we felt lockers were a way to get those patrons that might not be able to get to our library in time. And also money, lockers do cost money. And although the lockers we come up with are cheap, um, there's, there's still money involved. And the reason we got these lockers is it was the end of the budget year, 2020. So that would be budget year starts October for us. So it was end of September. So this was around August we had some money left over, a few thousand dollars, and we needed, we wanted to do lockers. Now with our city, we have to have what we buy for that budget year in the building and complete it before the, the budget year is over or else I guess there's paperwork. I'm really, no, I'm not part of the budget process. I just know that. And so when we're looking like we need lockers, we want lockers now. Well, if you're going to, go through a vendor, you know, especially with those locker holds that have a kiosk that requires connection. They're gonna wanna install it. They're gonna wanna set up the programming and software with it. We just didn't have that time. We had the money, but we just didn't really, and we didn't have a lot of money either. We really didn't have 10,000. We had a surplus just because we were closed. We weren't buying a lot of materials during that closure and um, just staff time. Um, we, we just didn't have a lot there. We didn't use a lot. So we just had a little bit of money left over. And so that's why we were looking at the lockers that we were looking at, which are these. These are our lockers here. Um, this is a link to our uh, library website about these lockers. Uh, they just look like lockers that you would have at a gym or even at a school. Um, they're just a steel exterior with a plastic front and a little electronic keypad. Um, really, we were just looking for what can we get and put out there so we can have patrons get items uh, without coming in the building. And Cecilia came to me and said, we wanna do lockers. If we just have lockers, can Koha make this happen? And I thought about it for a little bit. I was like, yeah, sure, Koha can do anything. We can figure out a way and a process to get these lockers to work and get um, our patrons their materials. So these are the lockers we bought. Um, we bought them from Granger. They're about a thousand each. Uh, so. That, that's the price now. When we bought them, um, I talked to our accounting person, Mary, and she said, we got them for about 2,000 uh, delivered. Um, when we got them though, they were damaged. And so we had to send them back. Um, that took a couple of weeks. So dateline, uh, in, the deadline's getting closer. Um, we get these and we're like, okay, let's test them. We'll put an item in there, punch in a code, and then come back the next day and um, what you do is you punch in the same code that you punched in the first time. It saves that code as the code to access that locker. Um, we'll come back, we'll open them up, and we'll see, you know, do a dry test and make sure these work. We came back the next day, the locker was open. Turns out these only lock for 24 hours. And um, to stop that, you need a key. We don't have keys, they didn't send us keys. And then we're like, well, we can't use these lockers. We call up Granger and they're like, oh yeah, 
yeah, yeah. If there's a key that you can that you can buy, just send us back those lockers. We'll get you the key. We'll send them back. At this point, it was like, no, no, we can't do that. Um, we have knowing how long these lockers took to get here. There's no way we can do that. So we thankfully reached out to the um, people that made the keys, uh, lock up. Um, they did Digilock, and they were able, they said, oh, yeah, we have the master key. We'll send you one for free. And we even bought, I think, two for just extra safekeeping from them. Um, and there's a picture of the, the manager key is what we bought. Um, there is a little just prong slot on the locker keypad that you just push that key in for a few seconds. It goes beep, beep, beep. And then it no longer unlocks after 24 hours. So now that we have keys and also having keys is nice because if someone locked our lockers, we wouldn't be able to get in them. We would actually have to just wait for them. Just, I don't know how what we would have done at that point. So it's good to have keys. Um, we didn't think about that. We were just thinking, hey, we need lockers. We need them here now. Um, so just something that you might think about is how to get into those lockers. And of course, like the Granger um, details don't mention that. They don't mention that, oh yeah, you might need these keys to get in it. Uh, so it's just something you might need to think about. Um, so let's go into Koha. And what we did with Koha to help us um, use these lockers. Uh, the first thing I knew is we could set up a library and set that up. Uh, you just go into administration under libraries. We made a new library and we called it the NRH Library Pickup Lockers 24-Hour Outside Pickup. And the reason I made that name very long, very detailed, is because that's the name that shows up when you're putting items on hold. And so I was hoping when someone, not all our patrons are like this, but some patrons just play around with what we have on there. Um, and I have a good example of this. Um, I was playing with patron clubs. I only had it turned on for a day and I already have three people signed up for these clubs. They don't even know what these clubs are. They're just assuming they know what the clubs are. Um, one person came in and was like, oh yeah, I signed up for this David Baldacci club. When am I getting the next book? And I was like, no, that's not a thing we we started. Um, <laughs> you just saw, somehow saw it for that day that I had it open and, and joined it. So I was hoping that someone, if they accidentally put a hold on this, they would kind of get, they kind of know ahead of time what they're getting into. It's a locker, it's outside, and I can get it whenever I want it. Uh, the code um, doesn't really show up on OPAC. It's used for reports and um, and internal stuff in Koha, but it's good to know it. And the really important thing is just make sure to make it a pickup location. Uh, pretty much everything else we left blank on, um, on here. Um, you don't have to leave it blank. And then my next slide will show why is because of course, it, if you have your libraries displayed in the OPAC, it will show up in the libraries listing on your OPAC. Uh, I have this example because we hide our library um, little option that's on the OPAC. Um, we only have one library and the other one is online. And we just don't want to confuse patrons. Um, we could feasibly have that locker hold and list some details there, um, but we just hide it. Um, just didn't want it on our OPEC and to confuse them. And so if you ever need to hide things on the OPEC, you just use a little bit of CSS and the admin OPEC user CSS field. And I could just give the example there. So in the OPAC, it looks like this. When they're putting an item on hold, by default, I don't know if this is for everything or an option. There's so many admin like little options that it could be. Um, but by default, all our other library patrons, it defaults to their home library. And so if they want to do an outside pickup blocker, they have to click on the pickup location and choose the NRH library pickup loggers 24 hour outside pickup. Now the, now the hope was that when they clicked on that, I would have something pop up or it would add a little note that would say, hey, you're picking the outside pickup lockers. Do you realize that's gonna be outside and you can pick them up and here's how to pick them up. I could have figured that out. Um, I know it involved jQuery and it involved picking one of those, but I just, couldn't figure it out. So I went with an easy workaround and just added text at the end of that pickup location that's always there, just to tell you what these different choices are. 
and click here for more information about the locker holds. And that's the little jQuery that I added. Um, I, I know you can use document ready at the beginning of your jQuery to do all of it, but I'm not there yet. And it's just looking to make sure that the window location is at this reserve and just a little HTML that I added there. So let me go through the process now. Unfortunately, cheap means more staff time and not having as many shortcuts that your technology would have. As you saw, our lockers, there's no technology. It's a keypad, you punch in the code, keeps that code. So this is unfortunately the entire list of steps to get holds to the locker. Um, first, a patron puts that item on hold and then staff pull that item. We use the holds queue so everything that is on hold is on that holds queue. It doesn't really give you any information more than that. So staff, when they're pulling holds, they pull holds twice a day for us. Uh, they pull holds, they pull all the holds and they scan them. So they check in the items. Um, the thing is we want, we use template toolkit, which I'll show later. So it'll print a different hold slip for a locker hold than it does for a normal hold. Um, staff should hopefully see the difference and put the slip on um, the book and the hold slips will go to this hold locker shelf. And the other ones, all the normal holds go out to our hold shelf that's in the library. Um, now that doesn't necessarily mean all staff do this, but that is the hope. Um, then we have trained locker, st locker staff that do the locker holds. And the only really reason we do this is not because it's difficult or requires technology or technical prowess. It's just because there's a lot of steps and if you mess it up, we can fix it, but there's just a lot of steps remember and um and although there's always that chance since we're just punching in numbers that you punch in the wrong one and so we just want staff that are kind of paying a little bit of attention so someone isn't locked out of their hold so the uh locker hold staff um they go to the hold the shelf where our hold lockers are they check the due date to make sure that it has the proper expiration due date or expiration date, not the due date, the expiration date. How we do our expiration dates is just whenever the slip prints, it does seven days in advance on our normal holds, three days in advance for our locker holds. So locker holds only stay on in the locker for three days. Now we, the staff are supposed to do the locker holds twice a day, same time as our hold. The staff do the holds, but that doesn't always happen um, so if a, or if a hold, locker hold comes in sometime during the, like end of the day, it might sit there for overnight. And we want to give those patrons the full three days. So if, I mean, we can always just mark it with a pen and put a different day. Um, that would be too easy for me. I would just rescan it and get a whole new slip for it. Um, so we check the expiration date, make sure all the expiration dates are giving them three days. And then we check in while logged in as the locker library. Um, I'll show this later, but the reason we do this is so it prints a different slip and also it notifies the patron that their item is ready. Um, because before when you're just checking in these holds, it's pretty, pretty much it puts it in transit. These holds are going to that fake library we made, the library locker library. Patron doesn't know it's ready yet. It hasn't been, they haven't been sending notice. So when we check it in as the locker library, Koha captures it and says, oh, it's here, it's ready to pick up. I'll send the hold notice to that patron and let them know. And so this is kind of time sensitive now because patrons have been alerted that their holds are in the locker. So these holds need to go to the locker. So we have to finish the rest of the process. Um, if a patron needs to be called about the hold, we call them at this point. When we moved to Koha two years ago, we used to have a automated dialer on our old system. It wasn't gonna work on our new system. And also no one in the building knew how to use the automated dialer. We had outsourced that to a third party who we bothered a lot with emails, but he wasn't really under contract or anything with us. So instead of investing in a new autom automated dialer, we decided to just call them by hand. Uh, we looked at reports, we were only calling on average about 10 people a day for holds. Um, that means they didn't have an email and they didn't have text notices in our Koha system. So we only did about 10 a day. And when we, our, 
our dialer would break from time to time and it would take us a while to find the information for this guy that set up our dialer and get him to actually be like, hey, I know we're not paying you anymore, but can you like help us look at the dialer and see what's going on? And so while it was down, the patrons we called were pretty happy that we called them. They were like, oh yeah, it's not, it's a real person. That's cool. Yeah. What's, why are you calling me? And they're like, oh, your hold's ready. And they, they were appreciative and happy to talk to a real person. So kind of knowing that, and these are generally our older patrons anyway, um, we decided to just call them. Um, so when I go through and show you the hold, this locker code, code slip that prints with, at this point in time, you'll see I used a really um, quick way to tell the patron, or sorry, the staff that's scanning these that they need to call this patron. Uh, so we have scanned all these items in, notices has been sent out. We now have a stack of items to go out to the lockers. Um, I am actually telling you the way I do it. I missed a step that, you, that is what um, is in our actual steps, which is to check how many locker lockers are available. Um, at this point, we it's very rare to have all our lockers filled at a time. So I usually don't do this step and then just assume I can go out there uh, and get these all these items in the locker. Probably not the best thing to do. Um, but since we don't really have a system to know what's in those lockers and what's been taken out, it has to be visual. You have to go out, see how many lockers are open and then how many people need lockers. Uh, at first we thought of having like, like a whiteboard system or something to mark it. But since it's not electronic, it's all having to be visual anyway. We just walk out there, see how many lockers are available, walk back in and then make sure to have that many patrons. Um, like I said, we only hold them three days, which is less time than our normal lockers. And so it came up, well, what if we don't have enough room? Well, then they just sit there on that locker hold shelf. Like I said, they haven't been notified yet. So maybe the patron will figure that we're just behind on them. Um, happens all the time when we can't find books, patrons have to wait. So it was just one of those. Well, if it happens, well, they'll have to wait a few days for those to clear out. Hasn't happened yet. Our locker holds, even though they've been used, haven't been so busy that we have to, we don't have like a, a, a queue for the, for the lockers. Okay, so back to, we have our items, they have to go out. Um, the thing we do now is we check the item out to the patron. Since the lockers have no electronics, there's no way to check out the item unless we do it visually later. Um, so we check the item out now. Um, this took us a little time to get used to because we really did not like the idea of checking out the item to a patron before they had it. Um, there was a lot of pushback on that, but there were others, um, other programs we started that we started doing that anyway. And, and it would hopefully still be in the locker until they take it. So we were just kind of okay, got okay with it. Um, the other thing you do is you, when you check out the item, we have security gates, you unlock the security at that time. So when, when the patron brings it back into the building, it's not beeping at them. This is the step I always forget to do. So when I'm walking out to the lockers, I think beeps, I have to turn back. Um, there's a lot of steps actually I forget to do. <laughs> um, when doing this, uh, checking it out to the patron seems to be a really hard step for me to uh, get to. Um, and when I go through the reports, I'll show you a few uh, things I've built in so I can double check myself. Um, also, this is one of those few times that, so everything else we're just scanning in, checking it out to the patron requires you to pull up the patron's account. And if I had remembered when I was checking in the item and it said, this item is on hold, and I remembered to open up the patron at that time, I would have the patrons ready to look at. I'm not taking that far ahead, even though it's only two steps ahead. I am just checking in items and getting hold slips, looking if I have to call them. And then I'm like, all right, now what do I do? Oh, I have to check all these out for these patrons. And then so you could scan the item, pull up the, the item record, look at who it's on hold to, and then pull it up that way. Um, I do have a report that I now just open and then just click on all the patron borrowers to open them up. Um, but this is the stuff I don't seem to forget. So once you have all your stuff, you grab all the things you need for these lockers, which are keys, plastic bags, and tape. Um, plastic bags are to protect the items from weather. If you just saw, they are just these steel with a plastic cover. 
Uh, you probably can't tell from there, but the steels do have air holes all throughout the lockers. Um, and although it is kind of protected from the weather, we have lost maybe, I think we've lost only one book to weather damage. And that's because water can get in there. Uh, we didn't think about that too much. We just got lockers out there. Uh, so once you have all your stuff, you go out and put the items into the lockers. Uh, so here's an example of all the stuff. Uh, I just grab a book cart. I grab all the items that have to go out. I get my plastic bags, I get my tape, and I get my uh, master key. Um, sometimes I forget the tape and I have to walk back in and get the tape. Um, I usually don't forget the key or the plastic bags, but the tape is the thing that always gets me. Um, and so once you have all this, you go out to the lockers. Um, we just use the, the hold slips, and I'll go over that, but the hold slips identify who the patron is. And so you just match the hold slips together and you put them in a bag and you put them in a locker and then you stick that hold slip on the plastic outing. And that is the code that is used for the patron to figure out which is their locker. Um, there's nothing to really slide that into on our locker. So we have to use tape to just tape it on the plastic. Uh, the receipt paper we use is sticky. And so of course, the first time I was like, I don't need to, I can just fold the sticky receipt and it'll use it and that'll stick to the plastic. And of course it fell off and no one knew what that locker was. And so now I have to use tape to tape it to the locker. So I keep talking about our hold slips and how you'll uh, patrons identify what's there. So this is an example on the left is our normal hold slip. And on the right is our locker hold slip. Pretty much use the same code that Bywater graciously made for us when we migrated. Um, our hold slips go on the spine of our books. And I didn't want to change that too much because patrons were already used to our um, vertical hold slips. And um, for privacy reasons, at some point we changed it to this very complicated looking code. I say it's complicated. Um, only because I don't like saying it like three times a day and I always mess it up. It is the first three letters of the last name, the first letter of their first name, and the last four digits of their card number. Usually by the time I'm done saying that, they're already at the hold shelf going, where's my hold? I don't know where it is. So I wish we came up with an easier method to identify, but for privacy reasons, this is what we came up with. And then on the um, locker hold, hold slip that prints out, You'll see I just added our like an image, just kind of eye-catching for staff, um, along with the different due date um, for that, and then instructions on how to open the locker. So it's right there on the locker that they're coming to pick up. Um, I think I overthought my process at this point, because if you notice, the numbers are different. I, I wish I didn't do this, um, but I was, the idea was, I was that we needed a number that they would be able to, we needed two numbers. We needed a number for them to open the, that the, the four digit code for the lock and a four digit code for them to identify their, uh, which locker is theirs. And so what I should have done, or I wish I did, was it was use the four, like we, just like we did on um, our hold slips, the last four digits of the card number as their, um, as the identifying code and then come up with something else for the four digit code for the locker. But I thought at that time that, oh, but what if, so the, we needed a number and the only two numbers that we require are like one we only thought at that time was phone number. It's like, so we can use the last four digits, the phone number. But then I said, well, what if they change their phone number? Then they're like locked out of their locker. They won't be able to get in their locker at that point. So I'll just switch the two. I'll use their card number as the code because everyone has their card number. They'll never lose their card number. It's, as you laugh, it's probably the same chance that they changed their phone number and forgot it too. So I was like, oh, they'll always have their card number. So when they come up and they see the code, they'll be like, well, I don't know that those numbers, but that's my last name and first name. I'll just use my card number and see if it opens. Um, so it was this weird chance thing that'll probably never happen. I just complicated things more. So that's kind of the thing, just don't, you might not, sometimes you can overthink of a thing and come up with um, scenarios that might happen, but really just simplifying it might be the best way to do it. 
Um, I have the code for our um, the code for the hold slip and it uses a lot of template toolkit here. Um, I don't know what a lot of it means, but I can tell you that there is a um, little message here that says seven days later. I changed that to three days later and I have my hold slip. Um, but all the other stuff. So that's what I mean. You can just play with it and, um, and kind of get what you need out of Koha sometimes with just playing, playing with what's there. All right, so here's the also um, the template toolkit for the our three hold slips is like I said, there is the our normal patron slip, the slip that gets printed for a locker hold, and then when we're checking it in under library locker, the a slip prints there. And what the slip that prints there is it has the locker code you're gonna use. So um, the last four digits of their card number. And then all I did was um, if no and I should have used one that has an email, but then I used the email field there, and then NOR has the text, the SMS number field there, and if Koha can't pull either of those, it just tells you, hey, you need to call this patron. Like I said, there's, I didn't use any if statements. I had to do that really quick, so all I did was just say, like, print the email, print the SMS, and if both of those are blank, staff know to call this patron. Um, the template toolkit, code that I used is a little more confusing. I pointed to Bywater's uh, blog there on how to do this and kind of use their um, their blog post there to work this. And as I go through it, um, I sometimes, like even going through it for the presentation, I kind of got confused on why I did this. Um, but I think it was, I was building in pieces and had to go back and change things. Um, but it, what template toolkit is it uses the branches. So you call the branch field for the, the hold slip. And then all it does is check who staff is logged in under, which library the staff is logged in under, and the branch that the hold needs to be picked up at. So if staff are logged in as North Richmond Hills Library, which is where staff are normally logged into, if it needs to be picked up at North Richmond Hills Library, it prints the first slip. If it needs to be picked up at the locker load, locker hold locker library, it prints that third slip. And then if they're logged in as locker hold and it needs to go to locker hold, it prints that. Actually, I think it's, I just use, if they're logged in as locker hold, it always prints that, yeah, that second slip. So that's kind of how I get it to print like three different slips. Um, and then that locker hold thing, instead of having to pull up and write down, the code that you're going to use for the locker, you just stick it with the items and take it out with you and then just trash it at the end. Uh, so here's how you just change that. Um, we'll set your library to that locker hold library really quick. Uh, even when you're logged in, you just hit set library. You can change your library back and forth. And then we always tell staff to just close the window because when you log in, um, it just remembers to log into your home library. Um, yes. When I walk up to go put locker holds out, I sometimes forget to close. And when I come back, there's a staff member at, at my station going, oh, it's doing weird things, Michael. Can you come look at it? It's like, oh, I forgot to close it out and you're using my login, please just close it. And, um, so that sometimes happens. And the part below is just showing how you can change hold slips and you can make a hold slip for that specific library. So we just made a hold slip for the locker hold library. And um, the reason we did that is so we can just automate the emails a little. Um, so this is just our, an example of the hold notice. I also want to show it for the header and the footer that I spent way too much time trying to figure out and Lucas helped me with that. Um, but so the locker hold slip, we just changed some of the verbiage inside to let them know where the pickup, that you have a pickup little hold locker, pickup locker hold ready, and that here's how you get in it. Um, like I said, the, the instructions are on the slip. So if they get an SMS instead, hopefully they'll be able to figure out. Um, but it gives them title, author, and their um, expiration date. Uh, the only thing I haven't fixed on expiration date is in the OPAC under their hold, under their holds, is it still says they have seven days to pick up an item. Um, so locker holds, we 
it says three days, but nowhere in Koha is it set to three days. It's just something we we are using. Um, we say three days. This is three days. The lock route size is three days, but Koha still thinks it's seven days. Um, here are some reports in Koha that I use to help. Um, they're very quick, easy reports uh, to make, um, but it kind of just helps me um, cut some of the time. Uh, the first one is items in transit. And so those are items that have been scanned in and should be on that locker hold shelf. Um, and I run this report after I do the locker hold. So that and when I can look at the shelf and know it's empty, I run this and say to see, do I have any other items that are in transit that are missing? And if there are, then I will check the whole shelf and kind of or I can see which the item is, who, what patron has it, and then go to the hold shelf because it's probably sitting on the hold shelf, our normal library hold shelf where it shouldn't be. Uh, the second one is hold tending to locker. This is the one I use a lot. This is the ones I've already scanned it in. Patron has already been given the notice, but I have not checked it out yet. So I run this report. It's now like in our OPAC. Um, Good thing about being the only one that knows how to do this, you can just add shortcuts anywhere on the OPAC that only you want to use. So it's just under like a, it's on the main page. And I just click on it and go to like hold tending to locker. And then I can control click on each of the um, patrons and then pop up with the uh, patrons accounts. A lot easier than having to go into each item to find out who it is. Um, and the last one is the number of locker holds in a month. And that's just for stats for our locker holds. Um, that's just look, and that's really just a quick report to look at the old reserves, which are reserves that have already happened. Um, none of the locker holds, since we check them out pretty much immediately, none of them are just sitting there on the hold shelf, and it just looks at the last month. So here are some stats for our locker holds. Um, as you can see, we started in November of um, 2020, and it took some time for patrons to keep to find out what it is. And then we've had pretty st um, pretty still numbers um, rest of the way. Don't know what happened last month, but it was probably just how the month cut off that the 106 from the month before just headed into that 206 of the month after. Uh, I also looked at unique patrons. We've had 137 patrons in those eight months that used our lockers. Um, so it's not just the same six patrons, which is good. Um, and so he, here are some problems and solutions that, that I might not have already talked about. Or so these are the complaints that we have gotten. Uh, we've had patron complaints that there's not enough good light there to punch in the numbers. Um, I did get the light in the picture to hopefully point like we do have a light, but then one of our other solutions is we put these little weather protection on the keypads. Um, and if you just look at it now, you can kind of see um, that it casts a shadow over the keypad. So that is probably blocking the light. So when they come in um, after we're closed, after it's dark, they are not able to see the keypad to punch in their number. So just so something to think about with light. Um, we also added, like I said, these are not weatherproof. They're just seemingly indoor lockers that we stuck outside. Uh, we did not even think when we bought these that they would go there. Um, there was a discussion where should we put our lockers, this side of the building or the other side of the building. Uh, we chose this side of the building because um, the parking lot is really close to this side. On the other side, there's this long walkway. We just wanted people to be able to jump out of the car, grab their holds and go back. Um, so we said this side of the building and we told our facilities, hey, install these lockers somewhere. And they came back and said, oh, you know, there's this alcove right next to that outside that would be perfect for those lockers. And we said, no, we didn't think that. That's perfect. And so that just worked out. Um, I actually think we were just going to put them underneath that light. Um, but they fit in that, that alcove there. Um, and to protect, to keep some rain out, um, because we do, after a storm, <laughs> go out and kind of clean the rain out of them. Uh, we added some extra rain protection on the top of the lockers, just the acrylic plastic that we had um, lying around since we have it um, all over the library now for you know, COVID protection. We just cut a little piece of it and then jammed it into the front of the locker. So it has a little bit of a, a ledge to it. 
we're still looking for an awning for this area, and maybe that would help us with the low weather protection. Um, the cool thing about these lockers is it was towards the end, and we we're like, we're going to do this now, and it happened in two weeks, which is amazing for a library. Um, we're still talking and looking at an awning, and it's been you know six months since we installed these. Uh, so that's usually the process of how long it takes us to uh, to go with the project. So the future plans, uh, Cecilia had actually talked about these a little. We were thinking this was as like a test project to do these lockers work. Can patrons get into them and get their items? And the answer is yes. Um, but we initially had thought of putting these lockers away from the library um, to use as outreach and to use as ultimate pickup spots for a library. COVID kind of just made us need to come up with a system for the lockers. We came up, it gave us a reason to put the lockers at the library, which we had not thought about before. Um, so we're still thinking about putting these lockers um, in other places of the city. Like um, our city hall is across that highway. So it's about 10 minutes away from our library. So maybe putting these at the city hall or parks or even apartment complexes around the, the city. Um, it would be good to find some lockers that are for outdoor and can withstand weather and would not get drippage into the lockers. Um, so we might do that too. Um, and then buying on for current lockers is always gonna be on the list of future projects that someday may happen. All right, questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, um, so actually we have a different scenario, um, but I'll, I'll answer that. So if hey, a, hey, Michael, can you repeat the question? We oh, can't sorry. hear it on the, um, the thank So you. if a, uh, have we had a, they have a, um, a drive through system and do we ever have a time when a patron does not need that item and wants to pick it up? Um, instead of the locker, pick it up at the library. Um, yes, um, and if it was just one item, which I don't think that's happened, but if it was just one item, or I mean, if it was all their holds, we could just use the key, um, get their items out, go into Koha, uh, what is it called? You reset the hold or you mark it as not revert, yeah, you revert it, and then you would just change the pickup library and then rescan it, check it in, and it would print out the whole slip for the library. Right. So we, yeah, I would just go in and hit the revert button. So the hold just reverts to not being captured and it keeps their place in line. And then you would just rescan the hold and that would go, then go to them. Um, the thing we've run into is this just happened the other day was, oh, that one book that's on hold for somebody else, I don't want it because it's on hold, I'll have to bring it back. So we have to go get that one book out of their locker, which means you can't use the key because the key um, would reset that locker. It would cancel the code you have in it. You have to pull up their account, figure out the code, write down the code, write down the locker code, and then go out, punch it in, pull out that one book, and then reseal it with that one, the co their code so they can pick up the rest of the items. Um, which is why, I mean, I'm on desk, so it's like, hey, Michael, there's a locker hold question, and yeah, they have to come get me. Um, the actual thing that happens way more is five minutes before we close, someone calls and says, I'm not going to make it. Can you make mine a locker hold? And then as you saw the steps, it takes time to do that. So usually five minutes before close, um, I will usually be like, okay, fine, and then just run frantically trying to get it out. But if it's just other staff, it's like, no, there's no way you can do that in five minutes. Do you have to at least be at like 15 minutes to move that? There's so many steps and you have to think it all through. Um, because at that point, yeah, you still have to do the same thing. You would have to revert it, change the pickup location for all of their items, go through that whole process. So um, that's been a case that's happened a few times that I've been there. It's, we need that whole, I won't get there in time. Can I get it now? Yeah, so that that would be like a no, no. Um, and thinking about how um, the hold lockers on the other side of town, a lot of the things I built for this idea kind of had that expansion idea in process. 
Um, that's why I called it like the NRH library locker hold pickup is because I wanted to point it to it's at the library. And so if I added another uh, hold location, it would be like the city hall 24 hour, or it might not even be, if it was at city hall, it wouldn't be 24 hours. They might be inside too. So it might be the city hall pickup lockers and I can include their hours there. Um, so a lot, a lot of the processes I could just add like I could add other locations for hold slips. And so it could be like, so when you check it into um, that location, it would send them a specific hold slip to say, your hold is ready at this place. Um, and to do that, we thought about it a little bit. It would have to involve us having a vehicle and probably like an iPad and a scanner so that whatever staff is at the location could check it out right then. Um, or it was going to have to ask Bywater to somehow set our notices to go out later. Because right now our notices go out like every 15 minutes. And so you don't want someone checking in an item at our library and then it being ready and telling it's ready at City Hall and it takes us 15 minutes to get over there. Um, so those are a few things we might have to look at if um, decide if we ever do expand it. Okay, Jason, any questions? You had quite a few questions in the YouTube chat. Um, Cecilia has been fielding those for you. <laughs> so, um, uh, and you did cover a lot of what was asked within the presentation after the questions were asked. So um, I don't think any anybody in the room missed out on those. Oh, and Cecilia says that the awning is getting installed next Tuesday. <laughs> You are getting an Ani. See, that's all you have to do is call it out in the presentation. Not to say things don't get done, but the lockers went really quick. It was like idea, three weeks later, we had them, they're out. Um, there's even a video, if you go to that link, of me showing the lockers um, and how to use them. Um, but that was really quick. That just, just, and I think it was we had that deadline of we have the surplus of money. We want to spend it now. All right. If there are no questions. Thank you. And uh, good night. <laughs>